something that really, really, really will help people with learning uh, programming, uh, which, you know, really, truly helped me a lot, is that you have something that you want to do in code and then you go and do it, right? Having projects, having um, ideas, and then actually going and trying to execute against it is going to be the biggest driving factor for how much you're going to learn in programming. Um, for me, there were things that I wanted to do on a Raspberry Pi. And um, so I went and I bought a Raspberry Pi eventually. That wasn't the first thing I did. I learned a little bit of, of Python first. But I went and I bought a Raspberry Pi. And I was very annoyed that it wasn't easy to know the IP address of the machine. I started doing some research and I decided to get this Adafruit um, LCD Pi plate. And you can see that I printed the uh, IP address there on the screen, but uh, it's not only the IP address for the high, hard wired IP address, it's also the wireless IP address that's on there as well. And uh, you can see I have my Raspberry Pi over here uh, on the screen that I'm sharing. Now, I'm not going to go too in depth about the Raspberry Pi just yet. I do want to mention that it was beneficial for two different reasons. Um, I was able to do the projects that I wanted to do, which allowed me to be more interested in learning programming because I was working on a project for something that I wanted to see come to fruition. The other benefit of doing it on the Raspberry Pi is that I got to learn some Linux, like uh, doing things like using the LL command, doing cat, or going into VI to edit um, files, right? There was a lot of different things here, and then I could learn how to delete stuff or delete just one line at a time, two lines at a time, um, how to move to the end of the file, move to the top of the file, whatever. Or, and, and then uh, I'm not going to save this because I like to keep that code. Let's make sure I saved it properly. It looks like it. Um, but I'll get more into all of this later. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to be messing around with this file later. So I'm going to do a backup of it so that I don't have to worry about uh, really screwing up a script that I don't want to screw up. Now, there's something else that I want to talk about. And this is the more urgent topic that I want to talk about. It's this course. It's a free course and it starts on September 3rd. So make sure you go to this site, go sign up, make sure that you want to receive uh, the email about this uh, course on, on learning Python. You'll also get other information. Um, in fact, the reason why I knew about this course was coming up is that I received an email and said, hey, we're doing our free course again. So make sure you sign up for the emails. Some more information about this course. This right here is very important, especially the no previous Python experience is required when you go through this course. It's also important that they're doing it on Python 3 because that's what everybody's using now. More importantly, for folks like myself, this course is for network engineers. So how do you log into a router? How do you log into the router and do show CDP neighbors? How do you log into the router, run commands like show CDP neighbors, receive the output, and how do you parse it and format it? How do you do string formatting and all these different things? Um, that's stuff that Kirk will go through. In fact, Kirk is a CCIE himself. He knows the Python side of the house, the programming side of the house, very, 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 very well. He also knows the networking side of the house very well. So he's a great instructor, highly recommended by me. And uh, I think that if you want to learn some programming and you just don't have the money to do it, but you want to have a high quality instructor, Kirk's, Kirk's offering this free course, go sign up. And since he's such a great uh, instructor, if you go through and you have the same assessment that I did that about his uh, quality as an instructor, then go and take a look at some of his paid courses as well and see what all is out there. And if there's anything else out there that interests you, you know, maybe you can get um, some company funded training uh, 
down the road or even out of your own pocket. But the other thing I wanted to talk about is solo, solo learn. When I was very early on learning Python, I went and took a course with, with these folks and, um, the good thing that I, about it, the, the big thing that I liked is that I could have this application on my phone. And if I got, you know, five minutes to do some studying for Python, no matter where I was, I could just take my phone out and start going through the course. The other cool thing about it is in the end, I ended up getting a certification from them. And it's a, it's a pretty nice looking certification. And I took that and showed it to my boss and said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going through and I'm learning Python. And here's my latest certification. I just completed this course and I'm continuing on to do more. Um, I'd like to now go back to the Raspberry Pi. And um, let's take a look at this code here. You can see that I import some libraries and I use the sleep. Um, I use time.sleep to wait 10 seconds. And then I initialize the screen. And... I clear the screen in case there's any old residue from stuff that, that's no longer uh, accurate. And I take a look to get the IP address for the wireless network. And if you take a look here, I run a Linux command. And this first command gets me the output about the wireless NIC, wireless LAN zero. But it's a whole lot of stuff that I don't care to see. So I did a grep on it and narrowed it down to just one line. And then, you know, I was being curious and I was thinking, hey, I wonder if there's a way that I can narrow the output down even more to show me only the IP address and the subnet mask. So of course I did some Googling around and messing around and guess what I found. Now, why is this important? Well, I get to learn a little bit more about Linux commands. Um, and the other thing is I get to make it very easy for me to get the output into my Python script. And then I don't have to parse it. I don't have to manipulate it there because it's coming in exactly in the format that I wanted it in. Um, then I do the same thing for the wired interface. And then I get both of them and I combine them together into this one variable, right? I use the IP uh, WLAN and I use the IP ETH zero and I combine the two of them into this variable, which is what, um, I check here to see if it's empty, right? Because if it's empty, then I print on the screen, no IP address. However, if it's not empty, I combine the two here. And the reason why I do it that way is because it prints out one on top of the other. It just comes out, uh, really, uh, looking pretty good. Now that got me, that's one of the things where I was like, you know, it, I'm, I'm super annoyed that the IP address is not easy to find. And so that was one of the early on things that I was like, I wonder how I can make this happen. And I went in and started messing around, figuring out how to do it. There's a lot of other stuff out there. I mean, it's, it's really that simple. Just find tiny little things that you can do and then start messing around with it. And then once you, once you get that one little thing working, you start having other things and other ideas and other projects that you end up working on. And then you find yourself building and building and building uh, up your, your skill set in terms of what you're able to do. And uh, doing it on the Raspberry Pi, as far as I'm concerned, is, is really, really, really fun. And there's so much stuff out there. I use my Raspberry Pi as a syslog server. I use it to very easily do... Uh, like a network sniffer. I'll plug it into the back of my, my phones, my IP phones, and I'll use the Raspberry Pi to be something that I can quickly get a PCAP off of. You can do a TCP dump. Let's see if it works here. You don't have permission to capture on that device. Let's see. See, now that's working. And you can have this print out to a file if you wanted. You can have it run in the background do it using the uh, ampersand uh, argument that you can add. Then also you can have it, you can use no hub. These are all little things that I learned. Like um, I didn't I didn't like that the 
um, when I'm when I'm doing a Wireshark or doing a TCP dump and I have it right into a file, it locks up the terminal. I didn't like that. So I learned about the ampersand. And then also when I closed my terminal session, it would terminate my TCP dump. I didn't like that. So that's how I learned about NoHub so that I could close my uh, terminal session and still let the wire, the, uh, the packet capture continue to run. And uh, those are those are the things that I want to mention. But the most pressing, the most important one, the most urgent one, is getting signed up for that course on September 3rd. All right, I hope this is useful for some folks out there. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video.